Welcome to the end of our course. The last thing we have to do is to look for some mockups to apply them to our illustrations so that they pop the most we can make them as a project. I normally use Graphic Burger to work with the mockups as they are free to use. As you can see, there is a lot to choose from and we can adapt the mockup we're going to use respecting the style we're going to use it for. I've already chosen a few so that we can go straight to the placing our design. In the case that you've never used a mockup, after downloading, you just have to decompress the file and open them in Photoshop. For example, in the cartoon style, I've chosen a frame that fits and makes a more pleasing view. The page has given us two options, but I'm going to choose uh, the vertical format as it's the one that fits more in mine. Now we're going to work on the layer of the intelligent object. It's a layer designed to be able to work with another file and that saves the changes we make in it that will show up in the original file where the layers of the intelligent files are. I know this isn't very well explained, but basically there's sub-layers in which you can edit the changes and make them a part of the original file. I'm going to erase everything here and export them into my drawing. Select the JPG, position it, and hitting Ctrl S, we can save. It's been applied, but as you can see, I have left the exterior margin in transparency. So what I have to do is fill in the space with a base color, maybe a white tone in this case. This is how it looks and it's adjusted perfectly and we've got an artificial image in which it looks like our actual illustration is placed in this frame. It looks a bit far away from me. So I'm going to select the layers and I'm going to make them bigger. Hitting Ctrl T, I'm going to stretch the corners and adjust the, to the image until I like it. We just have to export the image. I'm going to choose the JPG format and at 2000 we would have it. We hit save and then we have our first mock-up done. I'm going to repeat this procedure with the rest of the illustrations so that you can see how they look. In this case, I've opened up a t-shirt one and what I'm going to do is apply the cartoon style to it so you can see how it's easily adaptable to other products. The bad thing about this mockup is that I'm going to have to adapt it a, a lot more than in the others. It also depends really on which one you download. They're not always going to be very good, so you adapt them as you like to see if the image is good enough when you want to use them in different things. This is the result I like the most. I'm going to clip the image a little and after I'm going to export the image to have it at JPG 2000. Maximum quality. As you can see, it's a style that fits really well with the image. I'm going to apply it to the rest of the mockups that we have. In this case, I'm using a flat style on this tote bag. Obviously, if you want to use your design on other surfaces that aren't exactly normal or that are designed towards a specific use, you can see the result that is generated. I'm going to select the file and I'm going to adapt them to the, the board. And we're going to get this result. I've seen that it's too big, so I'm going to shrink it a little bit. I like it more this way. Okay, I'm going to test out a color change that I made with the color wheel that we had in Illustrator. The color palette is different in this case, as the illustration doesn't have a background, it doesn't look great. So I'm going to try to adjust the tone um, of the bag so you can see how it adapts. 
In a dark tone, it looks quite good, but I would prefer this result. I'm going to export this and save it. Okay. Lastly, we have to look at the comic style illustration. For this, I've decided to use a number of mock-ups, but I'm going to use this frontal t-shirt. It looks a little too big, and the t-shirt as a mock-up is a little too dark. So I'm gonna apply some filters to vary the compositions so it adapts a little better to my drawing. I'm going to reduce the size and I'm gonna lower it. This is how it would look. It looks pretty good. Again, I export it, and the last thing I can do is to see the result that we get. All right, I hope you really enjoyed this course and that you liked all the styles we worked with and learned to apply. We've been seeing the comic style, the cartoon style, the flat style, and along the course, I hope you've been able to learn the differences using vectors you can give us. We've seen that the flat style has given us a lot. Uh, you can use it on a number of surfaces. It's really versatile and simple to do thanks to the geometry. We've seen that the cartoon style is really adaptable and visually pleasing and the gradients and fusions are really useful when working on illustrations that we want to make pop. The adaptability is also really present. Lastly, the comic style, uh, their, their, their images that try to motivate people to focus on the character. I hope you really enjoyed this course just as much as if I've enjoyed teaching it and I've enjoyed giving voice to it. Um, if you've enjoyed it, maybe I'll see you in future courses. See you guys later.